so I have finished doing all the tracing and all the circuit work and I ended up rewiring this switch. It turned out that the way it was designed didn't meet our needs here. So I have rewired it, reinstalled it, I put the microphone element back in and now I'm ready to button it up. You'll see these three springs here. Be sure if you take this type mic apart you get these springs back in. What they do is hold this microphone assembly in. Then when you place the back and the front of the microphone together it holds the mic element tied up against the front of the microphone so nothing rattles or shakes when you're using the microphone. Make sure that there are no wires sticking out around the edges and it's a little game to play getting everything to go right but you might have to do it two or three times. Hold it together tight then put the screws in Drop all three into the back. Then using a Phillips screwdriver, bring them in, but don't tighten them one at a time. Get them all snug. Make sure they're lined up right. Remember, the springs are pushing the back of the microphone away from the front. So you have to keep holding it and my grip gets weak so it keeps slipping. Now snug the screws and I say snug meaning if you try to tighten them as though they were nuts on a wheel you're going to strip them. So there it is. That assembly is completed. Now I cut the old connector off and I'm going to now according to the directions. Uh, why don't you put your put your computer on pause right now Get your camera out and take a picture of this. What this is, is the chronicolog chronological order I have discovered best for me to put these microphone plugs to prepare the cord and to wire in the mic. Plug. Okay? Alright, so instruction one slide the sleeve on the cord. Now let me tell you something and pay attention. You are going to, if you haven't already done it 50 times, you are going to solder up everything and then forgot to slide the back of the plug in. So in this case, there isn't much straight wire left before the spiral, so I'm going to slide this Switchcraft XLR4, the body or the sleeve, slide it in, pull enough of it through so you have plenty of room to work. Now, find your Stanley knife and about three quarters of an inch cut through the black rubber outside of your mic cord. 
see if you've done it without cutting into any of the wires. There's a little part there not done yet. Just carefully cut that rubber and make sure that you can see what's going on inside. There's another little area. Be careful and pull that off just like that. Now here we have the four wires. This is the microphone wire. You want to always wire the microphone hot to the wire that is inside this shield. So we'll unwrap this shield. In most cases the shield is going to be the common for all of the connections. Get rid of all the junk. Carefully get all these. Try not to break any of these little thin wires. I'm going to sit down so you can get so you can see me here in camera range. And unwrap this wire shield. Hopefully you will discover that this is real metal wire. It's not that cotton covered resistance wire that won't solder. And you might as well either figure on doing a crummy job of wiring or find another microphone that has real wire in the shield. You see this? Here's the white microphone wire and here's the shield that I have unwrapped. Now hold the three wires and twist that shield. Make sure you get all the little fine wires together. Put your glasses on if you have them. Make sure again. And then twist this. And now that shield has become a wire itself. Next. Separate all of the other wires. Typically, you want to key up the amp with the red wire. And typically, the shield would be the common and the black would be the microphone return. Here's what. On these, where is my... I had all this stuff sitting here so I could show it. Here's the layout of the switch. This is what I drew from looking at that switch. You recall I showed you that switch, the profile of it. This is the diagram I drew and this is how the wires will be connected from the switch. Let me show you this. You'll notice that I drew the picture of the switch. Remember that curved part? The part that the microphone button pushes? The button pushes this way and on shorts the transmitter. Remember I told you the trans, or not the transmitter, the amplifier is shorted to cut it off instantly. That opens that short circuit and when you push this, now you bring that over to make a connection here, which now keys up the amp. Over on this side, this lever also pushes this knob into this connection, which connects the microphone to the audio input of the amplifier. So when you're pushing on this, you're unshorting the B plus circuit to ground. You're switching the B plus circuit into the 12 volts battery power. And at the same time, this is pushing this over here to connect the microphone. When you release 
the button. When you release it, you now disconnect the microphone and you shunt the residual power in the amplifier to ground, to kill it. So when you want key the mic, everything is dead silent. That's what you want. So draw yourself a diagram based on the kind of switch you have. Whether you have that leaf switch or whether you have the slide switch like this. Next, write down the way you have the switch wired. It may not be wired the way you want it. And you may find it easy to just remove the switch from the microphone and all the wires. Just clean up the terminals and start over. That's what I did with this one. So here I show you the mic element, which remember that microphone had two black wires. So the hot black wire, the black from the mic. Okay, the next, the mic to the amp is a white wire, remember? And next, amp on is the red wire, and amp off is the black wire. The amplifier pins. So, when you're wiring up the amp, one and four are the on and off. The common for the microphone element in this case is black. The microphone goes to pin number two on the amp. I think it shows it here. And so on. So this is the way you're going to wire the plug. Now I found a handy way to hold that plug while I wire it is just to plug it into the amp. Just These are really tight. These new plugs. So there's that four pin. This is the female side of it. And remember, they're numbered. It's hard to see. Where's my light? That light always finds its way to the other side of the room. Wow, that's really difficult to see, isn't it? Across the camera is it going to focus? There, see the number one on the left, and so they're numbered counterclockwise. One, two, three, four. Four is the one on the right. Come on, camera, stay focused. Anyway. Pin number one is where my thumb is, and pin number four is where my index finger is. So, plug this in to the amp. You see how I have numbered this side, one and four? Plug it into the amp. It's a good way to hold it while you're soldering. So, there. What better way to hold the thing while you're working on it? Back to the microphone wire. Now we have to figure out how to get these picky uni little tiny wires. And I do not have the right tool. This particular stripper is 18 to 10. I really need one that, that goes from 14 to 22. I'm going to try this. And what do you know? It worked. I was able to tip it sideways and I got it to pull that piece of insulation off. I'm going to try it again now with the black wire. About 
a quarter of an inch or so, an eighth of an inch. Look at there, it worked. Holy cow, what could possibly go wrong? Next and last is the red wire. Holding this sideways and it worked. Now take your thumb and your index finger and twist those wires. You don't want them to separate. They come out of the cover, separate. These wires are not twisted before they're covered. So when you pull them off, be sure. Now my soldering iron isn't plugged in. So I'll have to, I know what I'm gonna do. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Here, this, this is where it all began. And so I'm going to use this. Be sure you have nice solder, nice clean tip. And check this to be sure it's tight. I did check these. And you want to tin these wires. And so the way I'm going to do that is put this solder my good old box of solder and I'm going to set that up like that. Now I gotta get over here and make sure this camera is aimed properly so you can see what I'm doing. Yes, that's good. Okay, so warm up your soldering gun or your pencil I'll plug the pencil in and let that warm up. And tin these wires by touching the solder and the wire at the same time. And uh, this is warming up slow. Some of these will go real fast. Some don't. I have tightened it. You need to tighten these nuts to make a good electrical contact. And also tin your shield wire there. Each of these wires, now I have black wire. Didn't didn't turn out so good. I better do that one again. Each of these wires now has enough solder on it that when you do the same thing to the microphone terminals. All you'll have to do then is to just touch the mic terminal and the solder on the wire and the mic terminal will blend and give you a really good tight solder connection. There we go. Now I got a nice little blob of solder on all of them. See that? Next, you want to tin the terminals on the plug. Do it the same way. Get the iron hot. Sniff it. That's a good way to know it's hot. When you can smell the heat, it's hot. So move over with the solder, and this is a ground, this is not a pin. And again, we're short of light. Let me see if I can get it over here. And so we'll touch a little bit of solder here, just like that. Shake off the loose stuff. 
Go to pin number two. Shake off the loose. Pin number three. And pin number four. Now, we've put the, she, uh, the uh, sleeve on, we've cut and trimmed the wires, we've tinned them, now we insert the plug into the amp to hold it, we've done that, and we tinned those wires. Now, we begin by soldering wires one and four. Those are the two outside ones. So position your amp. I know what I'll do. I'll unplug this. Now, the amp makes a great jig for holding the plug, doesn't it? Okay, pins one and four. Remember, this is four and this is one. And so, what do we have here? Pin one is the red wire, pin four is the black wire. Okay. Now I'm gonna use my gun. I'm always more comfortable using the gun. It's a little bit slower. But what happens, unless you have one of those nice stands, those, one of those nice soldering stands, these overheat, and by the way, this is warm enough now, I should tin this tip before I forget it. Anyway, these tend to overheat, so they're hard to use. Keep your tips clean. Now, one and four, right? Okay, so, the red wire goes to number one, which is the left one. So, holding, the wire up against the pin, the red wire. Missed it. This, this takes a good steady hand, guys. And I'm getting old and shaky. And four. Try to keep the wires now steady so you don't break them. Remember, three was the shield, right? You have to be quick or you'll burn your fingers. Missed it. There we go. And finally, the mic wire, which is number two.
There you have it. All four are connected. Now, you don't know you got it right, and neither do I. So, I'm going to pull this out, lay it down here. I'm going to hook the amp back up again. By the way, these Jones plugs, the, the male Jones plug is available online. More about that later. The female you don't really need. You can rig up those connectors for that. So, hook that back up. Now, carefully, so you don't move these wires, you don't want to start breaking wires, plug this in. And see if it works. Hello, 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 breaker, breaker. Anybody got a copy? 10-4, what's your 20? See, well, we have some feedback now. And this I'm going to talk to you about. This is what's going to happen when you're standing or sitting in the front of your bus and you have speakers up front. Do you hear that feedback? Do you hear that echo? That's because this microphone and the test speaker is about they're about four and a half, five feet apart right now. So that's why you don't want speakers in the front of your bus. Okay, this works. So now we're going to put this connector together. Inside this connector is a plastic sleeve that will surround these terminals when the sleeve is moved up to the right position. And do it carefully so it doesn't jump loose and yank the wires. This locking mechanism is what slides in to this slot in the sleeve. Now, you see this screw here? This is the trick. This is screwed in right now. To hold these two pieces together, the screw will show through here, and you will take a screwdriver and turn the screw out. And it catches in here, and that's what holds the plug in. So, carefully get everything slid in. And now, those wires are going inside that sleeve. Now I don't know where my little narrow screwdriver is, and I think these are all too wide. I keep losing my little narrow screwdrivers. And then I grind another one up, and then I lose it. And it's the story of my life, losing those little narrow screwdrivers. But here we are. This is the completed unit, and so now, don't forget to screw that in or you'll pull the thing apart. Plug it into the amp, check it again. Hello, 10 4, breaker, breaker. Hello, folks, boss, old man Phil. So, now we have a nice, good PA system ready to install. Okay, go ahead. If you have a positive ground system now, mount your little mounting board to the amplifier and then mount the amplifier to someplace convenient on the bus where you're not going to kick it or move the wires. Uh, a good place I do it is up toward the front, somewhere right behind me. And the reason for that is that either standing or sitting, I'm not yanking on this cord, stretching it way out. So keep the amp up high so that either whether you're standing or whether you're sitting,
the cord isn't far away from the amp. Okay, well, there you have it. Now we have an amp and an oddball microphone that works beautiful, and we're ready to get in our bus and go someplace. Have a nice evening.